Welcome to the 2010 ACLS Guidelines presentation. Entitled What's In and What's Out in the 2010 ACLS Guidelines. This lecture was created for Baylor Medical Center at Irving, Advanced Cardiac Life Support Providers. By Rommel Lantaho. I disclose that I do not have any financial gain or any form of monetary remuneration on all of the medical products mentioned on this lecture. Also, I want to emphasize that I do not intend to replace the clinical judgment and prudent decision on how to treat the patient. This material will focus on the highlight changes of the 2010 American Heart Association Advanced Cardiac Life Support Resuscitation Guidelines. The biggest change that the American Heart Association Resuscitation Committee did to this new guidelines was to change the fundamental algorithm of life support. The ABCs of life support, or airway, breathing, compression concept, is now changed to CAB. That is, compression airway breathing. The following slides are a few of the scientific evidence that the AHA experts used to change the guidelines. On this study, in an event of sudden cardiac arrest half at a time no compression is being done. In my opinion, this study suggests technical and other issues, causing the delay of the administration of chest compression. Another science that the AHA experts used to change the guidelines. Berg published a comparative study in 1997 between a resuscitation technique using a compression with rescue breathing and compression by itself. The study suggests that there is enough residual oxygen seven minutes after cardiac arrest. This data however support that in scenarios like sudden cardiac arrest, the patient would benefit from compression and not from supplemental oxygen. As I quote Dr. Potts, a senior science expert of AHA in one of his lectures says that a quality ACLS starts with a quality BLS. The biggest change on the BLS algorithm is that after checking the level of responsiveness, the look, listen and feel for breathing in the initial two breaths was removed in the BLS algorithm. Activate the EMS after initial assessment is still the same. The AHA recommends that we utilize the AED the soonest we can, and follow AED prompts as indicated. Or if the AED is not available after activating for an unresponsive victim do compressions right away. Compression to ventilation is still the same from the 2005 guidelines, which is 30 to 2. Verbatim from the 2010 BLS guidelines. The lay rescuer should not check for a pulse and should assume that cardiac arrest is present if an adult suddenly collapses or an unresponsive victim and is not breathing normally. The health care provider should take no more than 10 seconds to check for a pulse. And, if the rescuer does not definitely feel a pulse within that time period, the rescuer should start chest compressions. A Class 2A Treatment Recommendation To simplify the BLS algorithm, Check the level of consciousness, if not responsive and no signs of respiration. Call a code and use AED if available. Using the push and push fast technique. Start compression right away. And after 30 compressions. Open the airway. Then provide rescue breathing. Repeat the compression and ventilation cycle for 2 minutes before checking for spontaneous pulse. Just remember that in an effective resuscitation the patient needs compression, 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 and more compressions. In general, there was a slight change in the ACLS guidelines. As to the concept and philosophy of ACLS it is pretty much the same from the 2005 guidelines. This is now the 2010 pulseless arrest algorithm. The assess and manage technique is still highly recommended. In this new ACLS algorithm, it is still a best practice that you assess first the need for electrical therapy. In PEA acetyl, the use of atropine sulfate was removed in the algorithm. As I quote verbatim in the 2010 ACLS guidelines, atropine sulfate reverses cholinergic-mediated decreases in heart rate and atrioventricular nodal conduction. 
No prospective controlled clinical trials have examined the use of etropine in asystole or bradycardic PEA cardiac arrest. Lower-level clinical studies provide conflicting evidence of the benefit of routine use of etropine in cardiac arrest. There is no evidence that etropine has detrimental effects during bradycardic or asystolic cardiac arrest. Available evidence suggests that routine use of etropine during PEA or asystole is unlikely to have a therapeutic benefit. A Class 2B Treatment Recommendation for this reason atropine has been removed from the cardiac arrest algorithm. Otherwise we can still use epinephrine with same dosing and frequency. No change also for vasopressin use. Electric pacing and asystole and PEA is generally not effective, and no studies have observed a survival benefit from pacing in cardiac arrest. In pulseless VTAC, VFIB, algorithm, still recommends the compression, shock and drug cycle. The dosing for electrical therapy has not changed. The use of epinephrine and vasopressin was not changed also. For antiarrhythmic drugs the AHA strongly recommends amiodarone, a class 2B treatment recommendation. Same dosing from the old guidelines which is 300 mg as initial dose, and can be followed with 150 mg 3 to 5 minutes thereafter. We can still use lidocaine as an alternate antiarrhythmic drug for amiodarin. Lidocaine is still a class indeterminate treatment, meaning no formal study was done to support this recommendation. For polymorphic VTAC, AHA does not recommend the routine use of magnesium, unless torsades de point. AHA recommends amiodarin for polymorphic VTAC. The empiric use of magnesium is considered class 3 treatment meaning it may be harmful to patient based on evidences, to simplify the pulseless arrest algorithm. After initiating CPR and attaching patient to monitor, check the rhythm to determine if defibrillation is needed. Give catecholamine an antiarrhythmic drug as indicated. Follow with compressions after each drug administration to facilitate circulation. Advanced airway may be considered at any time at the discretion of the provider. Quoting the guidelines, if advanced airway placement will interrupt chest compressions, providers may consider deferring insertion of the airway until the patient fails to respond the initial CPR and defibrillation attempts or return of spontaneous circulation. A Class 2B Treatment Recommendation Careful administration of air support is strongly recommended avoiding an increased intrathoracic pressure thus decreasing cardiac output which has a direct effect to patient survival. Another new for this guidelines is the implementation of post-cardiac arrest care. The main goal post-cardiac arrest is the preservation of vital organs. That is, to prevent or at least minimize cerebral insult. The initiation of hypothermia treatment within 12 to 24 hours after VFID cardiac arrest is a class 1 treatment recommendation, meaning various independent studies support this action to be beneficial to the patient. The provision of adequate oxygenation and perfusion is also vital to patient survival. Bradycardia algorithm has not changed much. External pacing may now comes after trying atropine, which is a class 2 a treatment recommendation. Dopamine, epinephrine and L remains class 2 B treatment for symptomatic bradycardia. In some, atropine first and then consider external pacing. The change that the AHA experts made in tachycardia algorithm was the use of adenosine. Adenosine can now be used to treat a symptomatic monomorphic VTAC. And, or can be used for differential diagnosis in a wide complex tachycardia. The rest of the algorithm process was the same from the 2005 guidelines. For questions please email me at rommel.lantelho at baylorhealth.edu. Thank you for your time.
I saw Paterno.